my name is Kirsty Gogan. I'm uh, Executive Director of Energy for Humanity. Um, we're a pro-nuclear environmental NGO and uh, I'm, I co-founded the organisation together with uh, film director Robert Stone who directed Pandora's Promise, I'm sure you've seen the film, and um, uh, philanthropist Daniel Agata. Um, the three of us, we co-founded Energy for Humanity because um, really up until now, only industry and politicians have been making the case for nuclear and we thought really what we needed was um, a civil society based organisation uh, to make the case for nuclear energy from a humanitarian and environmental perspective. Um, we're, we're global in focus. Um, we're, uh, we have our, in our values, we're independent from industry and, um, and politics uh, and we're profoundly committed to improving quality of life for all people. Um, so uh, Energy for Humanity right now is um, uh, it's a loose network of people from all over the world who are really committed to solving some big challenges. So we have the challenge of climate change where we have to urgently reduce our carbon emissions globally by mid-century if we're to avoid increases in temperature um, and the, the catastrophic implications of that. Um, but we also have to understand that half of the world's population currently don't have access to electricity um, and they rightly aspire to, to have that access to electricity. Um, so how do we meet those twin challenges? We think that we need not just renewables and energy efficiency, which are the solutions that are being offered by mainstream environmentalists, but we have to use all the tools in the box, and that means nuclear energy. And nuclear power already makes a huge contribution to carbon mitigation and providing reliable and affordable um, electricity globally. Um, it's one of the key ways that we've already reduced carbon emissions in the world. Um, and not only that, but there's research to show that nuclear energy, by displacing fossil fuel generation, has saved 1.8 million lives globally and potentially could save millions more. COP21 in Paris at the end of this year is probably the most important of the climate negotiations that we will see in our generation. Um, we're expecting 40,000 people to descend upon France. It's one of the biggest international conferences, if not the biggest, that France will ever have hosted. Um, and the outcome will really set, set the direction of travel as to whether we're going to meet our um, mid-century targets to keep global temperatures from rising above two degrees. Um, what we really want to see is a shift in the discussion that this problem is so big and so urgent that we really need to um, use all of the technologies available now. <coughs> and that means not taking anything off the table. Um, we can't have a conditional response to this global challenge given the, the urgency of the timescales and the scale of the challenge that we face, we need all the tools in the box. So COP21 is a really big opportunity for us to make our voices heard, to stand up, to show up, and uh, all over the world people are getting organised and planning to come to Paris and host events and have teach-ins and share their knowledge and debate and, and make the case for nuclear to be included in the deal. Um, so I really hope that you'll consider joining us. Um, get in touch and uh, see you in Paris.